Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets which you can download in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated and please do share out the videos. And now we're going to carry on with paper S of the 2018 grade five practice papers. So if you turn with me to page 24, we're gonna have a look at question four. So we're going to be referring to this little extract of music here over the next couple of pages. So even when we turn over, just keep this to hand. So the first job is to just identify some of the terms that appear in this and these are presented to you as multiple choice. Don't forget this is going to be anything from grades 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. So there's a, a healthy chunk of revision to be done there. I suggest that you group all of your like terms thematically throughout all of the grades. So anything to do with slow, anything to do with fast, uh, you'll have linking words, whatever makes sense to you. And then if you feel like you've done a good chunk of revision, you can test yourself if you go to the back of the PDF document. I've done you a little bit of a pop quiz there just to test your knowledge just for your own benefit. So let's go ahead and give these their definitions. So grezioso, graceful, that's not too difficult to deduce. Poco, ral, poco is a little, ral and tando is getting a little bit slower. That first came in grade one, so it's a while ago. A tempo, it's sort of back to the original speed or in time is the literal translation which makes sense. So then, uh, here we go on to the next question. So we're asked to rewrite the first left hand chord of bar eight. It's marked with a little arrow. Let's have a look at that. There we go. Now watch out here. In fact, they've even told us very helpfully in bold that the left hand is in the treble clef to begin with. It switches to bass clef here. So just watch your clef there. It's very, very generous of them to even tell you that really. We should just notice that for ourselves really. Okay, so we need to keep it at the same pitch, but we need to change from treble clef to alto clef. So alto clef is centered in the middle line. That's your middle C that everything works from and the clef is centered around. And so if you keep middle C, as your focal point, you shouldn't get the wrong pitch by getting the wrong octave. So we need the key signature of three sharps. C, D, E, F, C, G. And let's have a look. So that left hand chord of bar eight, there's middle C in the treble clef. It comes at the bottom of the treble. If you think about it on a piano keyboard, the middle C is at the bottom of the treble, the top of the bass, it's as if you've met in the middle. So it's at the bottom of the treble. So here we're on the E above middle C. And then we're four above that for the A. So C, D, E above middle C. And then we are a fourth above that. One, two, three, four for the A. So we'll pop a stem and they are dotted. So make sure you get your timing right as well. Don't do all that work on the pitch and don't get the timing correctly copied. There we go. So just keeping hold of this page and then moving on to page 25, we've still got some work to do. So we need to describe the time signature. We need to decide whether it's simple or compound. Simple is where it divides into groups of two quavers, two eighth notes. Compound is where it divides into threes. 
and then are the two, three or four beats per bar. Let's have a look. So looking at the music, here's our time signature and it's not immediately obvious until you get used to seeing this, but you can look through the music and you see we're in two groups of three. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, eight notes, six quaver beats, but we're actually in duple time. It's a compound time signature. We're in two groups of three. And so that answers our question. We are in compound time and we are in duple time. We are not in six time, whatever that word is in the duple version. Okay, so there we go. Let's have a look at the next bit. So we need to give the technical names of the two notes of the right hand part marked X and Y. So we're looking at this and this. Before I get bogged down with that, I'm just going to sketch out my steps of the scale just to double check myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course there will be sharps, but your key signature will deal with that. So let's have a look at X in bar three. That's a G, let's count up from the A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. G is the seventh, and we can see that's double check there. So I'm just gonna just sketch that there. We'll worry about the technical name in a second. Let's think of one thing at a time. And then one, count from the A, one, two, three, four. Always count the tonic as one. And you can see that D is four. There's a D. So it's the fourth. And now we can think about the um, technical name. So the seventh, the leading note, leading to the tonic. And then the fourth is the subdominant, literally the lower dominant, because it's five notes below the dominant. That's officially where that comes from. Just by chance, also, it's also underneath the dominant as well. So it sort of works both ways. The meaning of the word there, however, whatever, it's the subdominant. So now then, is let's find out which key we're in for all of the notes in bar 7 to 8 to be found in a particular major scale. So let's have a look at bar 7 to 8. So we have a key signature of F, C, G sharps at the present. And then here we're also adding a D sharp as well. And so if you've done your circle of fifths, you'll get the answer to that straight away. F, C, G, D is E major. If you're not sure how to do that, how to work out your circle of fifths so that you've got all of your major and minor keys instantly to hand, if you have a look in the cards and also in the description, you'll find a link to a video tutorial where I explain all about the circle of fifths. And that saves you a lot of time and pressure when you jump in between keys. So that's E major. There we go. Now then we need to write as the breathe or a double whole note, an enharmonic equivalent of the first right hand note of bar seven marked with a star. So here there's that D sharp. Now watch your octaves. It's not the D next to middle C, it's an octave higher. And let's just visualize that on a piano keyboard. D sharp. Now we could either call that E flat or actually we could even say F double flat. Any one of those will do. So let's just write that down as a breathe or a double whole note. So it's not this range, it's up here. That's the D. So this would be the E flat. So that would answer it nicely. Alternatively, you could go up to the F double flat. Either one of those will do. Now we've got a bit of orchestral information to look at just relating to this and then just generally speaking. So we're asked to name a standard orchestral instrument that could play the right hand part of this extract so it sounds at the same pitch and we need to say which family of instruments it would belong two. So we are in the treble clef in the right hand, so we need to make sure we choose an instrument that's, co that's comfortable in this treble clef range. And so, 
there are lots of options. We'll just jot down a few. If you were choosing the woodwind family, you would say uh, flute or oboe or clarinet. They are your choices there. If you choose brass, the treble choice there would be trumpet. And if you choose strings, you could say violin. There are other options. You could say a harp, I suppose, or something like that. But they are the obvious choices to me. Uh, now, depending what you've chosen here will then determine what you write here. So your answer must be a different family here. So I'll go through a number of options, but you must make sure you're choosing a different family of instruments. And now we need to choose the lowest sounding member so, we get, member, so we're going right down to the bass section. So if you chose woodwind, you could choose a string instrument, and that would be the double bass from the string family. Um, if you need to choose something different than that, we could choose the brass family, and the lowest instrument there would be the tuba. Or I guess you could say um, the bass tuba, that's part of the family, it isn't always present in the orchestra but it could be. Uh, or if you want to choose the woodwind option, then you would choose the bassoon, or you could also say the double bassoon, which is a bit like the bass bassoon I suppose you would say, it's the double bassoon. And again, that isn't always present but that one is, either one of those will do. And finally, we just need to think about a bit of percussion. We need to choose one percussion instrument and underline it that produces sounds of indefinite pitch, that's untuned, that doesn't play a tune. Now the Celeste does play a tune, so does the marimba. It's sort of like a um, xylophone kind of thing, or like the glockenspiel. The cymbals just provide sort of a percussive crash, you wouldn't play a tune on cymbals, that's your indefinite pitch or untuned percussion. There we go, so that's that question completed. I hope this is helpful to you, I hope that you're enjoying working through this, I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. We'll look at the next question in the next video. If you can give me a like that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated, please do share out the videos and also please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available there to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!